So, uh, first question. The museums are a very special building for architects. Why? I, museums are very special buildings for architects because usually it's because the client is so special. When you're working with someone sensitive to culture, sensitive to art or uh, other aspects of culture such as music or history, the dialogue that an architect can have with the client is enormously enriching. And when they embark on the goal to design a building together for a cultural purpose, it means more freedom, probably more innovation, or could mean more in innovation. And it's also a public building, so it will have a very special place within the community. Uh, why in Budapest it's so important or so tense the situation with the, the Millennium Park? Uh, why do you think it's, how say, it's, 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 it's very how say, important for everybody? Yeah. I I think when we talk about changing a part of a city that has been used and is very dear to people and has been used for many, many years and people have uh, an emotional connection and a feeling in one direction, any time change is proposed, it's very hard. And that's why I said in my talk that it, it is so special because architects can envision a future. They can see it in three dimensions. And many times people, common people, myself included, we can't always see what the, the future result will be. So we're asking people to trust and to wait. And, and that produces, I think, a lot, of it, a lot of tension. Now, in the case specifically of Budapest, um, I'm sure that there could be other issues that I, as a foreigner, I'm not familiar with. So I couldn't give a, um, an informed opinion about that. But I, I do think change is hard. I, I think it, we have to include a lot of voices as we anticipate change. We have to listen very carefully because people from many sectors have very good ideas about how that change should be affected and what the outcome should be. On the other hand, I guess maybe because of my own background, um, I would say embrace change because if you don't it will come anyhow so it's better to embrace it and drive it in a positive direction what kind of international experiences you showed us the international museums and uh, millennium park from chicago that i presented today are just examples of different trends in museums and it ranged from of course the well-known ones such as uh, uh, the Guggenheim in Bilbao to new projects that are starting to uh, come into construction in Saudi Arabia Island in Abu Dhabi. I also talked about smaller cities like Davenport, Iowa uh, in the center of the United States that has uh, a new museum, well has had for several years now, a museum by David Chipperfield. And those examples were just to show that there are hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of new museums being built all over the world, many different directions, some very successful and some are not so successful. So there's a wealth of information uh, that we can look to as uh, a place like Budapest moves forward with their new museum projects. Last question. What do you think, what should we take care of here in Budapest? That, that's a, a huge question. I, I mean, there's so many things to take care of. Um, I, I think the key to museums in the city and in a park for the 21st century is the connection of the outside and the inside. No, no, no longer can we think of a museum as a closed building where people go inside for one function. If it's a museum in a park, and if it's a park that people love, we should make those buildings and the museum experience very permeable so that people can flow in and out. Of course, I understand technical and security concerns, but they have to feel that the, the buildings are an extension of the park, and the park is an extension of each of the buildings. I think that would be a key element for the future of Budapest.